nothing deliberate about this framing today, okay? This is reconfiguration day in the shop. This is not a pretty shot, it's not lit. You're lucky I even got a mic on. But what I'm doing today is I'm moving stuff around. My workflow is gonna change because Alex is coming. My son is gonna come in to help me finish this van and hopefully he enjoys what he's doing and he'll help me build more vans. But I got this workstation back here that you've seen me sitting at where I do all my editing and my mic work, my audio. Uh, that's a big giant waste of space when you need more tools coming in. So I'm taking that workspace and I'm putting it in the front. Right now I've got a lot of room up front that only acts as an entryway. So I'm going to try to combine the entryway with the workstation and keep all of that office kind of stuff down at that end. And then we'll have these separate tool areas where we can get our work done. Another game I'm playing is how am I going to treat these end openings where my cockpit roof, my cockpit ceiling meets the van chassis. There's a big gap on either side and van builders, manufacturers, they all treat it differently. I've seen a hundred different ways to cover this up. Some van builders don't even cover it up. They just leave it open. They stuff some insulation in and you can see that, not this van. So let's play the game. Let's think it through. The first step before you decide on anything, in my opinion, is you've got to make a template. You got to see what you're up against. So I make a cardboard template that fits here. Now that I got my full template done, I can start thinking about how I'm going to handle this opening and the access into it. You could have doors, right? We could have a nice set of doors. We could make this wall panel out of Luan covered with leather or the marine vinyl. We could make it out of walnut, whatever. Beautiful, right? You've seen that. My problem with having a set of doors here is that you impede your access. You limit your access into the far reaches of this shelf. And if you're not very tall, it's even harder to get back in there. You're limiting yourself. And the door swing could be a problem, depending on how big or what the treatment is. That's if you had two doors. I suppose you could have a, a top hinge door like we have here. That would be okay too. But again, uh, it limits you. So I said, no doors. I don't want doors. Another option I thought of is a long oval, just a cutout in my fancy Luan or my leather wrapped wall, whatever that may be, a fancy oval cutout. I like the way that looks. I really do. It's pretty cool. It does also impede your access to the far reaches of this cargo shelf. So what did I decide to do? I took it a step further, looking at the oval. I started hacking up the oval and I came up with parentheses. That's what I'm doing. I'm putting a pair of parentheses up here that I cut out of Luan and I wrapped with my marine vinyl, the Thunder Gray. It does a beautiful job of complementing the interior of the van. So I'm bringing a lot of continuity from the cabin back. You don't have to maintain continuity in color, but in this particular van build, that's what I've decided to do. I'm taking these grays, not 50 shades of gray, just three, and I'm bringing it all the way through the van. So my parentheses tuck right in here behind this first rail, and they fit real nice. And I'm just setting these in for now. They're just standing in before I lock them down. Um, it's a nice treatment, it's stylish, and it's not impeding your access anywhere. You've got full height access to your cargo shelf. Nothing heavy up here, remember, but certainly things of size can be put back in here now because you've got access and you've got style and grace. Why do I have this front leading rail? That's another game we're playing. Let's talk about that. This front leading rail does a number of things. The first thing is it elongates your visual sight line. It gives the appearance of this area and or the van being wider than it actually is. Without it, with it. Without it, with it. See, another option here, another benefit to this is I have a mounting spot for these parentheses on either side. The third thing I like about this leading rail 
is I can put my curtain, I can mount my curtain track to block off the cabin. I can go wall to wall with the curtain track. All I have to do is remove this one bumper and my curtain track runs all along here and then we can we can swag them to the sides when we're not using them. You know how cozy that's going to look? Maybe even right from the center. We swag them down. Cozy. Now we got more projects to do today. Come on. Another thing I'm doing here this week. Oh. The trailer hitch. The trailer hitch goes in the back of the van, not the front, the back. This is a 5,000 pound capacity trailer hitch with a 500 pound tongue weight. It bolts right in into the frame. It's custom made for this particular van. I'm going to do a how to video on how to. Once this is in my shore power, my 30 amp shore power receptacle box is going to be mounted right to this trailer hitch. Another step with this trailer hitch was putting in my 30 amp cable. Okay, before I could glue my floor down, I had to route that cable under the floor grid, glue the floor down, bring it through a hole in the van floor, and route it to where it's going to sit right here alongside the trailer hitch. Could you imagine all the shit you got to think about to build a van? And a good metal enclosure, and it's going to be housing a smart plug receptacle. This is an adapter for your shore power cord and the smart plug receptacle with a nice stainless steel locking cover on the front. What's nice about these smart plugs is they lock in firmly. So you're always going to have a good connection. The other Marinco and the other types, they don't lock in so good. And that's when you get some, some arcing and some resistance at that plug. Open your plug and look inside at the three connectors. Make sure none of them are browning on the uh, plastic. If they are, that's overheating. You're gonna have a problem. No browning. Take a look. Remember, I'm still working on these wall panels. I wanna make sure that they can come in and out easily. I also spent some time locking down my modules, refrigerator and my armoire. I tried to make sure that I designed this thing in such a way that if it's torqued in any direction, it's going to hold fast. The refrigerator is 100 pounds, plus what you put inside it. And look at this cabinet. This is a massive cabinet. It's 25 inches wide and at this point 20 inches deep, a tall rather. And it's very deep. Okay, I'm leaving about a five or six inch gap in the back of this cabinet. It's an air gap and then it meets up here. See these air gaps are going to remain here and what will happen when I put in my curved ceiling, my curved back wall to this cabinet, you're going to get convection because everything below this cabinet floor and the side walls, it's all wide open. Airflow, big airflow. And I've got all that room for my wire chases in the back. Right here behind the refrigerator on this window that isn't being used, it's covered up, I'm going to triple insulate this area. And that's primarily because when you face the sun, typically you park your RV so that the patio side is in the shade. What does that mean? That means the sun is beating down on the back of your refrigerator. It happens all the time. So I'm going to triple insulate this back here along with that convection airflow. It shouldn't affect you. You should be good to go. You should, you sh your refrigerator should not be working overtime. That's what I'm trying to get at. These uh, struts, for instance, on the inside, they serve to support my inner wall of the cabinet. On this side, this is where I'm going to screw my TV mount. You know, the RV arm for a TV with the lock so you can pull it out and watch it and then bring it back in and lock it in place. Now you got to look at what's down here. This is cool. Look where the refrigerator sits. I actually developed a inner support system, an inner sled. See these smooth rails here. Those are lined up with the feet on the refrigerator. So when you put this refrigerator on this ledge, you just push it in and those feet slide right along these sleds. And that's what takes all the weight 
of the fridge. Like I said, 100 pounds with, with what else you put in it. This inner system is what supports the fridge. And then the outer framework is what carries the rest of the module. And again, wide open. When you slide that fridge in, you're not sliding it into a uh, plywood cabinet box that's all sealed up. And you gotta worry about having three inches of ventilation in the back. This is all open. It's all open. This fridge is gonna breathe. Pretty cool. Then the edges of the fridge come right up to these rails. So when this slides in, there's no lateral movement. It's got a firm place to sit. And in the back, I can clamp it. I could screw a little clamp right to the back. And then of course it gets screwed into the face of this cabinet. But that's the beauty of uh, this whole system is what you see in the van looks finished and covered. But behind the scenes, it's like a Hollywood set or a Disney set. It's all open and unfinished because you want that airflow. You want this van to breathe and you don't need the extra weight. Why would I put flooring down under there? You never see it. You're never going to touch it. The armoire, uh, originally I had two eight inch drawers. And what I decided to do is I stole a little bit of room from this one. I stole a little bit from this one. I stole a little bit from your hanging clothes and I added a third drawer. So now we are 16 inches on the inside and I've got a seven inch, a seven inch and a five inch drawer. You got three drawers and then in here you're gonna have this massive shelf which is 16 square. I think it's 16 by 17 and uh, you'll be able to put stuff in there as well. Nice little space under here. I'm gonna leave this open. I'll cover it in the back so you don't see the wheel well but this would be a nice little spot for a couple of pairs of slippers or sneakers, or maybe you want to put a dog bowl, water bowl and dog food right here. If you have a small dog, like a Chihuahua, you could have their little, this could be their little cubby. I maintained my jog. I've got that nice visual curve. And then I got a third panel coming in over there. So you'll have three jogs. And what that does is that widens the van down at this end. So you've got all these different living spaces in the van. That wasn't bad. Let's try it again. <clears throat> ah, you don't have to. That was fine. You got to get home for God's sake. <laughs>